What's up guys, Coach Abraham checking in with another video. Today we're gonna discuss the ladders. Can it make you a more explosive athlete, increase your agility, increase your speed? We're gonna go over that and see what the research says and if you should actually be incorporating that into your training. Let's go. So without giving my opinion first, let's go ahead and see what the research says and if we can implement that to actually increase our speed and agility. In our first research by Alexis Padron Cabo, the effects of training with an agility ladder on sprint, agility, and dribbling performance in youth soccer players. The purpose was to see the effects of coordination training using agility ladders compared to a control group. So one group was using the ladders, the other group was not using any ladders uh, with training. However, they were still training three times a week with their team. We had a total of 18 players split into two. One had 10, one had eight. And the test that they conducted was 10 meter sprint, 20 meter sprint, dribbling speed, the agility test, and the slalom dribbling test, if I'm saying that correctly. So overall, what the findings found was that there was no significant time in group interaction between the 10 meter and the 20 meter sprint. Performance did improve for both the 10 meter and the 20 meter sprints for the control group and the, and the ladder group. However, no significant differences were found between the two. And I'll get to that shortly if that's actually conclusive. For the dribble test, there was no difference. And that was the same for the agility and the slalom dribble test. As far as skill goes, there was no significant difference in that either, showing that speed and agility did not increase. So going back to the test results for the 10 and 20 meters, there was improvement in both. The ones that did use the ladder and the ones that did not use the ladder. But why is that? Well, if you kind of think about it, this was done during season and they're training three times a week and you gotta add that these guys are also running in practice, they're playing games, they're sprinting. So if you add that up, there's gonna be increases in speed and other potential performance aspects, which is what happened here. Both of them increased, but there wasn't a significant difference between them, proving that there wasn't any correlation with the ladders. And their main finding was that ladder training, in addition to a normal training in season, does not produce additional effects in sprints and dribbling performance. In another research, sprint training in pre-adolescent soccer players, 18 pre-adolescent male 11 year olds. So they actually found that coordination training, which are the ladders, actually increased specific soccer skill, sprinting with the ball more than typical repeated sprint training. So what they found was because these players were low level in skill as far as dribbling goes, they improve their coordination ability and thus improve their dribbling ability as well. So when you think of it like that, if you're already a very well developed player who knows they have pretty good dribbling and you add the ladders, it probably isn't gonna give you that same effect as these 11 year old athletes who still have a bunch of development left under their belt. In a third study I found the role and development of sprinting speed in soccer. Training using an agility ladder does not appear to satisfy training principles or load parameters necessary to induce chronic adaptations in youth soccer players. So all that means is that there is not a significant uh, stimulus to actually stress the muscles accordingly so you can receive those benefits in agility. So in other words, again, if you are an athlete who is pretty developed and you're trying to increase your speed and agility and you're doing all these ladder drills, Again, the stimulus is not gonna be high enough. The most specific thing you can do is actually go out to the field and do some change of directional work, put some cones or change direction, add some reactive abilities to it, sprint uh, 10 yards, 20 yards, 30 yards. That's gonna be the most specific thing you can do as a player because that's what you do on the field or on the ladders. It's not like you're juking a player doing little ladder drills. So this is why it's always important and I say, know the player so know who you are whether you're the player or you are training a team you got to understand what level they are what level you are and if ladder work is actually going to improve your ability or your coordination so the overall findings are showing that between 12 and 15 years of age the most efficient training method for increasing sprint performance is sprint training plyometric training and a combined training method and Guys, this is what I've been preaching since day one. People still think that ladders are gonna improve your speed and agility, but it's not. I know that's what the name implies, speed ladders, uh, agility ladders, but it's actually get with the times and, and do the simple work. Again, people want all these fancy drills and see what else is new, but man, stick to the, stick to the basics. I promise you, you're gonna become a way better player. 
So now I kind of want to go over how I use the ladders because I still use ladders on my players. So let's begin with my youth players. They do need coordination like the research showed. It can improve their soccer ability. Another thing is if I'm beginning a foundational phase and I'm still trying to gauge how uh, well coordinated my older players are, I'm going to include that for the first week. If they look savvy in that, I'm going to take them out the following week and probably not in introduce it again. Another way that you have probably seen me recently use on my social media is that I use it as conditioning. It is great because it is very tiring if you do that consecutively. The muscles are moving fast, 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 fast. So we're fatiguing the body. So that's what I like to use it for. Another great way is I like to use it as a primer and as a neural activator, just meaning that it's it's a great way to warm up the body uh, before the session. Guys, if you're actually interested in reading some of this, and want to look into this yourself i'm going to link it down below just so you can get a better insight and and educate yourselves i always say you as a player you got to be educating yourself just a little bit it doesn't have to be you reading books but at least knowing why you're doing what you're doing it's going to go a long way so guys i hope that helps clear some stuff up and i'm not saying ladders are bad at all no i'm just saying that if we are going to be efficient with our training and want to make the most out of it, we got to get training that's going to give us the most bang for our buck and not waste our time. Always keep that in mind. What's going to make you a better athlete and better player on the pitch? And that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, drop a comment if you have any questions. Let me know if you still think all this is wrong. And hey, maybe you've started doing a lot of drills and you actually improved your speed. Let me know. And if you're interested in hiring me as an online coach or just want some well-rounded programs to take you to that next level, I got them down on my website. I'm gonna link them down below. It's a new year, guys. Let's make gains. Let's train right. Let's become the best possible player we can. I'll see you guys on the next one.